Want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. This is the first book in the Bound in the Broken series. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. Um, so I, I like this book a lot. Um, I struggled with the rating that I would give this, but ultimately, um, as I finish this, I feel like I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5, just a flat 4 out of 5. Um, and, and yeah, there's a lot of things that I liked about this book, but there are some key things that held me back from giving this a 5, and I really wanted to give this a 5. I haven't given a 5 in like a month. Um, it's like my biggest drought of giving a 5 that I've ever had in my life, and, but I just couldn't quite give it. Uh, you know, I naturally would assume that I wouldn't love this book. You know, I typically don't love self-published authors. And, you know, I, I don't know why that is, but I feel like there's just something missing from a lot of them. But, but this guy, Ryan Cahill, he's got it. He's a great writer, and he really knows, you know, how to construct a story. He's, and what I've heard from everybody, that when I, when I started to read this book, I heard from countless people, especially in Discord. Um, and if you haven't joined my, the greatest Discord of all time, uh, hit the link down below and join. We'd love to have you and talk about books. Um, but they said, you know, read on. Even if you don't love this book, each of them gets better and better. The first one's okay. The next ones are amazing. And the fact that I thought this first one was better than okay gives me a lot of confidence going forward in this story. Um, so I don't want to ruin anything in this story. I don't want to spoil anything. But what I will say is that this is classic fantasy. It feels like this book was some sort of interesting blend of clearly having a more modern feel to it in the way that it was written. But it has a plot structure like it was written in the 80s or before. You know, it feels like a modernized Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, it, it feels like it borrows a lot from the Wheel of Time. Um, there's a ton of similarities here. And as I'm reading through this, you know, you can kind of check off the marks here for the things that were similar to this. Now, a lot of books do this. And then in the second book and third book, they start to really take their divergence. Um, but that's kind of ultimately what my problem was here also, was that, you know, while I liked this a lot, it didn't bring anything new um, to, to writing. And I kind of, it's not something that I always classify as like a must have, but when I think about it, you know, the books that I really truly love and that are a five out of five, they stand out somehow. They do something a little different. And this book just didn't have that. It was classic fantasy written more modern. And, and I like those kind of stories. And when I say classic fantasy, I mean a couple major points in that it starts off in a village. It starts off very unassuming, a very low key plot that takes a couple hundred pages or so to really get moving. And you're wondering for a while, I'm enjoying this atmosphere, I'm enjoying the world building, but I still don't know at all about where this plot is going to take me. Now, I, I really do enjoy those type of stories. You know, I, I think of like The Faithful and the Fallen in this realm, where, you know, it follows a lot of the same structures. Now, I ultimately gave all of the books in The Faithful and the Fallen a five out of five because they stood out. They did a lot of things differently. They played with religion in very interesting ways, and they all had amazing twists that this book just didn't quite you know, deliver on. There were some things that were a little unexpected, uh, but I wouldn't classify them as like mind-blowing or really trying to shock the reader. And I like to be shocked as a reader. I don't like it just for the sake of doing it, but when it's done well, man, those are the books that I always remember as the greatest of fantasy. So. So yeah, but you know, I, I love so many things about this story. It, it reminded me of, of a lot of the books that, that I love. And you know, I thought that the character writing was, was very well done. I, you know, it's got a fairly large cast by the end of this book and not all the characters have a ton of screen time here, but the main characters, the ones that I would classify as the people that are from the village and the initial people that are met that bring these characters to the ultimate story this is guiding itself towards um, were very well done. It took me a little while to differentiate them, as it always does for me. Um, but once I really did, they all stand out. They all are making progress as characters. They're ending this book in different and more advanced and changed ways than the way they started, and that's something that I really like. 
Um, you know, I, I like that this book didn't hold too many hands in terms of making things super mellow and uh, you know, I like a little darkness in my stories and this book had some of that. Um, not a ton, not as much as I, you know, this isn't anywhere close to like a grim dark story, but it's got some of those elements in it. Um, so yeah, it, this book had a lot of things going for it and a lot of things that I liked. Um, and I, and I have a lot of promise for it going forward. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, on the higher end of things that this book really excelled at was its world building. I really got sucked into this world. The map is beautiful. Uh, the map does that thing that I love in stories. I think that kind of started out in Lord of the Rings where the map is huge. And as the characters are progressing through the first part of the story, there are so many places that are left unexplored. And you kind of have that that knowledge that we're not going to get to all the places on this map. And that's what really feels real to me about good world building. When the world feels larger than this story, because that feels like real life to me. Uh, you know, there's too many fantasy books that have this super tiny map in the super tiny world. And it feels like the world was made for this story rather than the other way where this story was made and it fits into this world. It's an important distinction for me as a reader um, and one that this book does really well. And I couldn't help myself from constantly spending time flipping back and forth through this map, just looking at it, eating it in, tracking the progress of these characters on this journey that they end up going on um, and looking forward to where they're going to go next. You know, I liked the multi POV aspect of this book, although, you know, one of my criticisms is that it didn't utilize that enough. I would say that 90% of this book is the point of view of the one main character. And I would have much preferred either more point of view time devoted to some of these other characters. Um, and it doesn't matter if they're characters that are still in the same party. I love to get different perspectives. Um, you know, even if these characters are going through the same events as each other, I like that a lot. I didn't get that here. Um, you know, or give me a lot more point of views, you know, do the a Song of Ice and Fire thing where, you know, you have, I don't know how many there are in that Song of Ice and Fire, a dozen, um, you know, do the Malazan thing, or maybe not as much, but, you know, dozens. Uh, but, you know, I, I enjoy that kind of thing. I want to see the headspace of lots of different people. Um, but still, I thought the characters were well done. Uh, the magic system here is... A little on the basic side, you know, it's definitely, as I would classify, a soft magic system where, you know, there's no explanation about the origin of this magic or anything. It just, characters have magic, you have it or you don't, here's what you can do, learn it, get better, become a wizard. Um, I don't love that kind of thing and I, I feel that kind of cliche for saying that because it feels like that's the popular thing now. I feel like Brandon Sanderson really made it so like, Everyone knows the definitions of hard magic and soft magic, and hard magic is intrinsically better than soft magic. But I do feel that way, honestly. I, I, I do. I Almost every time that magic falls into that harder category, I like it more. And, but there's nothing really innovative here on the magic front. Um, you know, I thought that the, the prose here, I thought, was not you know, incredible, but very well done. I thought this writer did a good job. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, Ryan Cahill's first book. I think it is. And for somebody's first book, man, I can't tell you how many authors, I can't tell you how many famous authors totally flub it on their first book. And that's not the case here. So th this author, Ryan Cahill, has a very promising future. Um, I cannot wait to read the second and third books in this and then eagerly anticipate reading that fourth book. I don't know how many books are gonna be in this series, but I hope it's a long one. I hope this isn't gonna be, you know, a three or four book series. You know, let's go for let's go for broke. Let's get back to the old school style of doing 10 plus books in a series because this book has a lot of promise and I hope that the author really keeps it up. I kind of have a lot of assurance that he will. Um, and I hope that he's plotted out this series so that he knows these big points he's going to get. It's just I'm hoping for some more. I'm hoping for more depth. I'm hoping for more subverting my expectations. Um, I'm hoping for things to get a little bit darker. Um, although I, I don't think that's gonna happen, but I do hope that's gonna happen. I hope we get more time with some of these other characters. Um, and if even some of those things happen, uh, I'm gonna be looking at um, future books, gonna be in that four and a half, five category. And I can't wait uh, to get back to giving fives again, because I'm not in a slump or anything, but come on, bring them on. I'll take the fives, get them up, I'll eat them up. Um, so. I think I'm going to end it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading to you.
Thanks again to all of my patrons, with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Sky, Russell, Ron Reich, Romeo Mike, CJ, My Book Is Lit, and Jamie.